For some analysis now, we are joined by Brian Pfefferly. He is a Saskatoon lawyer and law professor who, like all of us, has been carefully watching this case. Hi, Brian. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us once again. The judge said the jury could find Mr. Stanley guilty of second degree murder, guilty of manslaughter, or not guilty. Do you have any insight on why the jury made the choice it did? Well, it's so hard to know because juries don't give reasons, unlike judges. So in this particular case, we're just sort of left with the uh, evidence that uh, we are being relayed uh, and the judge's instructions. So we can, I think, know uh, that the jury was not convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that there was any intention on behalf of the accused, Mr. Stanley. And it appears that they were also left with a reasonable doubt uh, as to whether or not this was an accident. Uh, so again, it doesn't mean that the jury found that the accused uh, had proven that this hang fire defense was in fact uh, what occurred. The uh, the jury must have been at least left though with a reasonable doubt that it that it that it did not occur. You've spoken before about how you regard our justice system as possibly the best in the world, and today we're hearing a lot of calls for change to the system. Do you see any need for change? There's always need for change, and I think there's always need for scrutiny, and I hope that we can benefit from this in a positive way, especially if those people scrutinizing it don't sort of, uh, say, throw the baby out with the bathwater here. I think that we, we continue to have one of the greatest justice systems in the world, but that doesn't mean that we should uh, stand by idly and, and not uh, scrutinize it appropriately. There's certainly room for change, particularly when it comes to Indigenous people and their perspective and their participation in the system. I hope that uh, if anything comes from this particular case, that some positive uh, steps can be taken in that regard. But I, I would stand by the, my previous comments that we do have the greatest justice system in my respectful view in the world, and, and we should be proud of it. We should be proud of our system. We should be proud of the people that participate in it and proud of our, our jury members that uh, participate uh, by, uh, by law and are forced to participate, but uh, do their job with integrity in my respectful view. Do you have any idea about how we could engage more Indigenous people in the justice system with regards to being sitting on a jury, that kind of thing? I think it's got to start with consultation with those communities themselves and, and too many times in, in Canadian history non-Indigenous people like myself have tried to sort of establish uh, reasons and, and, and things that we can do to, uh, to help Indigenous people. I think it's got to start with the communities and why, why are they not participating in our jury system. Talk to the communities, see if there's any insight that they may have. I think it's got to start from that perspective. I know I've got my own ideas and I, I think that uh, uh, increasing funding for communities, transportation issues, uh, child care uh, assistance and that sort of thing. Those are all issues we need to, to address potentially. And I think there's also an issue here with respect to the jury not feeling comfortable, uh, jury potential Aboriginal and Indigenous jurors not feeling comfortable participating in what's deemed to be a bit of a foreign system. But I think the conversation needs to begin with those communities and, and frankly probably end with those communities. But we all benefit with a, with a greater representation of Indigenous people in our, in our jury system. How tough is it to make change? Well, it's incremental and I, I think it's important that it be so. I, I think we don't want to be irrational, we don't want to be reactive, uh, we don't want to be overly emotional. I think we need to come from a principled perspective and, and deal with this in a principled way. We need to come uh, with it uh, understanding that there's a reason why our justice system is respected worldwide and it's because we do have a foundation that's built on some really good pieces and uh, the, the incremental change I think speaks to a rational change. We can't come out with irrational or quick fixes because those uh, quick fixes may have devastating consequences in other areas. So many people can sort of say they've got a quick fix solution but if that was the case frankly we would have done it by now if there was a quick fix solution to these issues. Let's get back to this case in particular. After the verdict, there were a lot of people that labeled the jury as racist. What are your thoughts a little bit more in depth on how the jury made its choice? Well, first of all, I think that uh, any suggestion that uh, the jury in this particular case was racist is, is troubling to me. I think it's not fair to the participants on the jury, and I, I would certainly reject those comments. There's certainly no evidence that that, that, in, fact took the, uh, that in fact was the case. Uh, the jury here in this case deserves our respect, in my view. Uh, they didn't come back with a 45-minute deliberation. These are people that sat, spent a night, uh, no doubt sleepless night, uh, thinking about what the right decision here was and came back the next day listening to and re-listening to evidence. So um, I, I don't think that there, that would be a fair comment. I think though in many respects we can say that perception can become reality and uh, this is one of the problems when 
we don't have visibly indigenous people involved in our justice system, it can lead to what I would view as unfair in, at times and, and uh, inappropriate criticism, but I understand where it comes from. I think it, it comes from a place of uh, true, I think, a desperation from many First Nations and Indigenous communities saying we need to be part of this system and when they're not visibly part of it they may feel like uh, this in fact is an unjust result and I understand and I respect that that's the view but I, I think we need to be respectful of the people that, that worked hard on this particular case and respect their verdict. I'm interested to know what you think about the Prime Minister and the Federal Justice Minister weighing in after the verdict over the weekend. Some have said that undermines the system. What do you think? Well, I think that's a, a good summary of, of, I think, what many people think. Uh, the trouble with Twitter is, especially when you're in that position, is if they meant something other than a criticism of the jury, they haven't come out and said that. And, and on first, at first blush, that's what it appears like. It appears that we have high-ranking members of our system, our Prime Minister, Minister of Justice, in many respects arguably the highest-ranked justice official in our country, commenting that this result was that we can somehow do better and there's problems with that so many fundamental problems that I could talk about it for a long time but one wonders if this is a if there's a retrial situation in this case uh, if it gets appealed if if the minister of justice is now saying that somehow we can do better she's essentially saying that the result from this particular case was not a result that she agrees with and that we somehow can do better and by all uh, reports Minister of Justice and Prime Minister uh, Trudeau were not sitting in the, the proceedings, nor was I for that matter, uh, to, to listen to the evidence and scrutinize the evidence, which uh, in, in our uh, court system, uh, that's required to be able to make a proper uh, determination as to the fact. So I think that's an accurate um, uh, comment that many people in the justice system, I think, don't support uh, high-ranking officials commenting on juries, and I think it could have devastating effects if that continues. Thanks for your time today, Brian. Well, thanks very much for having me.